Hey everybody, um, it's Mr. Bradley and uh, I am making a screencast to talk to you about how you can uh, use the data collected from a ticker tape or a spark timer to calculate things like acceleration or even just average velocity or um, even just possibly like final velocity after some amount of time. And actually, I'm going to be talking to you about this in, in the context of using the spark tape, but realize that what I'm going to show you is really applicable to all kinds of dot diagrams. We've talked about dot diagrams as a way of visualizing motion um, for objects that are moving. Um, and a spark tape or a ticker tape just kind of gives you a real life dot diagram of motion. So even though I'm gonna be talking about this in terms of spark tapes, uh, you could use this concept with really any kind of dot diagram. Also, I wanted to remind you um, that really a dot diagram, you know, the purpose of that is really just to kind of illustrate um you know the motion of something you know here's a great um just strobe photo that i found online of an accelerating runner you know the idea is that this this runner was probably like crouched down in a stance and um you know they took a they took a camera and just started taking pictures maybe every 30th of a second or maybe it's every 60th of a second while she accelerated um from rest and you know the idea is that you can see like every like position over those moments of time and it gives you a feel for just how she's moving that's really like what a what a, a dot diagram does and that's also what a spark tape does too right so anyway that's kind of the purpose of what we're talking about today so um you know let me remind you again of what a spark timer is you know i i, I think i've shown you this in class and if i haven't um you've hopefully been exposed to it before but if you're watching this video um and you've never even you know learned about this before I, I want i want you to kind of understand what's happening so this little device right here basically is just a device that when i turn it on it will try to make a little spark uh, caused between these two metal gaps or little metal bars at regular intervals of time uh, right now i have this one set up to, to make marks every six, uh, 60 times per second or 60 hertz i can also set it up to do it 10 times per second when i do that i think you can see the light flashing because um, it's basically turning on and off 10 times per second. Well, the whole point here is that I can feed a piece of tape, right? Hence the name, it's called Spark Tape. I can uh, feed a piece of paper in here, through here, and that paper has this little, like, um, uh, kind, of, kind of conductive ink, if you will, so that when the spark is made on there, it'll actually make a mark on the tape. You know, you can kind of see it sparking a little bit in the video which is kind of cool how it's working. But anyway, when I pull this through here, what I've now done is I basically made a record of the position of the object over time, right? You can see these dots that I have on here. All those dots near the beginning are just because I was moving the paper around kind of weird. But as I started pulling the paper out smoothly, you can see those dots on there. And, you know, this particular spark tape that I'm showing you shows that the object's getting faster. And I know that because the dots are... Um, increasing as sp in spacing as time goes by, right? So, I mean, that's kind of the whole key thing. As, as a quick reminder, you know, if you were looking at a dot diagram or a spark tape of something that was moving fast at a constant speed, it would look like this top tape right here. This is an object that's moving slower, but also at a constant speed. The reason I know it's at a constant speed is because the spacing here between dots is pretty much the same, right? That's kind of the key thing. That spacing is equal, so it's moving at a constant speed. Obviously, um, the fact that this is going, I, th I think I might have said that wrong at the beginning. The one on the top is moving fast because it's moving a big distance over a short time. The ones on the bottom are moving slower because they're moving a short distance in the same amount of time. We're making the assumption, of course, that both of these tapes were made with the same frequency setting. Let's say they were being made 10 times per second. That would mean the time between each of these dots is one tenth of a second. Okay. So here it goes that far in one tenth of a second. This one goes a much shorter distance in one tenth of a second, which means it's going slower, right? Simple enough. Well, when you look at a, a spark tape where something is accelerating, the way you know it's accelerating is because the dots are spacing out, right? So here, these dots, right? The object only moved that distance in say one tenth of a second. But over here, the object moved a much bigger distance in the same amount of time. So that means it was going faster, right? Same thing's true down here. Now, if I was going to compare these two tapes, I would think that this tape shows a larger acceleration 
because the spacing seems to in, be increasing at a, at a greater rate, right? Um, I mean, another thing that you can notice here is that this, this one actually has like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven dots from the beginning. This one only has one, two, three, four dots from the beginning. So the fact that this went four, uh, seven dots from the beginning and this one only went four dots from the beginning to me says that this one got going faster um, in a much, uh, in the same amount of time. So that would mean a greater acceleration. Okay. All right. So that's kind of the idea with just conceptually looking at these things. Well, one of the things I want to talk to you about is all of the things that you can find from a spark tape or all the things you can find from a dot diagram. Okay. Um, typically seeing, typically speaking, the two things that you can measure directly from a, a dot diagram is you can measure the distance that the object traveled because you can literally just measure how far it went from one place to another. And you can also figure out how much time went by when it traveled that distance. With just distance and time, there's actually a lot of things you can figure out, right? Like, I want to make this note right down here. I'm going to say if I measure distance and time, then there's really a lot of things I can figure out. Like, like for instance, I could figure out just the average speed. The average speed would just be D over T, right? I could find that. Um, I could actually find the final velocity if I assume that the initial velocity is zero. Okay, if you look on the summary of physics equations that we've given you, you'll notice that um, one way you can find final velocity is you can say 2D over T minus VI. Well, if you assume that the initial velocity is equal to zero, then you can find the final velocity. So that's one thing you can find. Um, another thing you can find is the acceleration, right? The acceleration is 2d over t squared. And that's what I'm going to talk to you about doing with this sample tape right here, okay? So really, these are the three things that you could find from a spark tape. Um, and we're just going to kind of focus on talking about the acceleration right now. Okay, so... Um, the, the method that you would follow, this is a little step-by-step -step thing, and, and you should probably come back to this and just consider this is like your instructions on how to do it. But when you're going to do this, you got to, first of all, figure out how much time is there, right? So the way you figure out how much time exists on the dot diagram or on the spark tape is you have to know what the frequency setting was on the device, okay? So we either have a 10 hertz setting or we have a 60 hertz setting. That means that it's either making dots one tenth of a second for a 10 hertz setting or if i was on the 60 hertz setting that would mean that it was making it one sixtieth of a second right maybe i have some weird non-standard spark timer maybe i have one that has a frequency setting of 45 hertz that would mean that the time between dot between dots is 145 of a second right it's really simple um, the relationships between frequency and time is that they're just inversely related to each other, okay? So then the way you figure out how much time there is, is you count how many gaps there are between dots. So here's what I want you to think about. Let's say that in this example, it's one-tenth of a second. It was set to 10 hertz, okay? So this gap right here represents one-tenth of a second. This represents two-tenths of a second. This represents three-tenths of a second. This one represents four tenths of a second. This one represents five tenths of a second and six tenths of a second. So by the time it got here, it has been traveling for six tenths of a second. Okay. So I counted the gaps. I went one, two, three, four, five, six. Six gaps divided by the frequency setting or multiplied by the, the tenth of a second. And I come up with six tenths of a second. That's how you figure that out. Okay. So let's do an example together down here. Um, you should have a ruler available to you. Um, I believe you have a ruler at your table that you're going to be using for this. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start off by measuring the distance from the first set of dots to the second set of dots. Okay. And hey, in this class, we always measure things in centimeters and meters. So make sure you're using the centimeter side of your ruler to do this. Okay. As I set my ruler up on here, and I look straight down on it, I think that it went 15.2. I think mine says 15.2. Um, no, I'm sorry, not 15.2. It's 
no, 15.2. I want to make sure I'm looking at where the dots are. Not the end of the tape, but where the dots are. And when I look at mine, I feel like that distance is 15.2 centimeters. Okay, now, sig fig rules tell us, measurement rules tell us, that you're allowed to estimate that in between the millimeters, okay? And I don't know, my eyesight's not very good. I don't have great eyesight. You know, I'm an old man. I wear reading glasses. Um, but I think that maybe it was a little bit more than 15.2. So I'm going to estimate that it was 15.22, right? It's just an estimation. It's just a little bit more than 15.2. I think that's what the distance was, okay? So now what I want to do is I need to figure out how much time existed on this tape. So I'm going to go from the first set of dots to the last set of dots, and I'm going to count the gaps. Here's one gap. Here's two gaps. Here's three gaps. Here's four gaps. Here's five gaps. There's six gaps. Okay. If this was set to one tenth of a second, then the time on this tape is six tenths of a second. Okay. It's the number of gaps divided by the frequency setting. All right. Okay. So now I have distance and I have time and I want to figure out the acceleration. The acceleration can be found by taking 2D over T squared. Okay. So I'm going to take 2 times 15.22 centimeters. There's really no reason to convert that distance because it's not going to interact with any other distances. So I'm just going to keep it in centimeters. And then I'm going to make sure that my final unit is appropriate based on that. Um, so I'm going to take 2 times 15.22 centimeters. And I'm going to divide by 6 tenths of a second squared. Okay. So now I do the math on my calculator. 2 times 15.22 divided by 0. 0.6, 6 tenths is 0. 0.6, 0. 0.6 squared. And when I do that, I get 84.555. Okay. All right, so here's sig figs. Got to think about sig figs. My measurement had four sig figs. That last significant figure is estimated, but it's okay. We all know that. I have four sig figs there. The time is assumed to be perfect. You don't consider the sig figs in the time. So really my answer depends on my distance measurement. I have four sig figs there. I can have four sig figs here, 84.56. And then the unit is right here, centimeters per second squared, centimeters per second squared. Damn, that's the acceleration of this thing. That means that every second it was getting 84.56 centimeters per second faster. That's what that means. Okay. Um, really quick, since we know how to do it, I'm going to find the final velocity really quick. The thing that's kind of cool about that is notice how similar the final velocity equation is to the acceleration. The final velocity is just 2d over t, not t squared. So I'm going to go 2 times 15.22 centimeters divided by 6 tenths of a second, not squared, right? So I'm going to take 2 times 15.22 divided by 0.6. And when I do that, I get 50.733, which is 50.73 with four sig figs centimeters per second. That's my final velocity, okay? All right, so looking at that, I want to double check and make sure that pretty much takes us to the end of these notes, right? So, um, Here's the deal. I just kind of taught you how you can use a dot diagram to calculate the um, acceleration of an object or the final velocity of the object or even the average velocity of an object, right? Um, you can do it by just measuring the distance between the first set of dots and the last set of dots and also measuring what the time is between the beginning and the end. I hope that's helpful. Um, hey, have a great day, guys.